Hi, my name is Taryn and welcome to a British audiophile. I, like perhaps a number of people, when they first get interested in streaming, they may turn to their phone or their laptop, picked up an old Toshiba notebook that I had knocking around, downloaded a program called J River, connected an external DAC, and it turned out to be a reasonable streamer. Eventually, I wanted something with a slicker interface and I wanted something with better sound quality, so I upgraded the Toshiba for an Auralic Ares Mini. And um, that turned out to offer quite a noticeable improvement in sound quality. Where do you go from there? A more expensive streamer? A more expensive DAC? Maybe. How about power supply upgrades? Well, I hear a bunch of you say, don't do that, that's snake oil. Let's find out. The reality is that a phone, laptop, desktop, mini PC can make a fairly decent streamer. Just don't rely on the internal media player. If it's Windows based, upgrade it. Get something like J River or Audiovana. They're not expensive. I think less than $50 equivalent is what I paid for running J River on my Toshiba. If you've got an iOS device, get BitPerfect. They'll do a pretty good job of preserving the digital signal. The other thing you don't want to rely on is the internal DAC. External DACs that perform well don't need to be expensive. The AudioQuest Dragonfly is less than £100. The Cyrus Key is even cheaper. And there's stuff from Ship, the Ship Modi, um, and a whole bunch of others that you can choose from. The problem is that a phone or a computer is not a dedicated audio device. If you have a look at the internals of this laptop, you can see there's an awful lot going on. There's the CPU, memory, clocks, buses running everywhere to various types of ports. And if it's a laptop, it's also feeding an LCD display. It's a very electrically noisy environment, far from ideal in terms of sending sensitive digital signals for high-end audio purposes. Now, I know what the naysayers will say. They'll say it's just ones and zeros. What difference can it make? But the reality is that it does make a difference. If you're interested in upgrading the sound quality, the answer is to go for something that is a dedicated audio device. I went for the Auralic Ares Mini, and that's because of Auralic's expertise with regards to streaming, wireless streaming in particular. And I also like the Lightning DS interface. It's a lot slicker than running J River off a Toshiba notebook. Now, if you take a look at the internals of this Auralic Ares Mini, you'll see that each part of the circuit is shielded, and that's to protect it from RF and EMI noise, RF being radio frequency, EMI being electromagnetic interference. Now, once you remove the shielding, you can see the architecture of the circuit. And the circuit's arranged to keep noisy parts of the circuit away from more sensitive parts. The voltage regulators are on the left. The ARM Cortex A9 processor is in the center. The top right-hand corner has the ESS Sabre DAC. And the bottom right-hand corner has the Wi-Fi board. All separated out nicely, all with their own bits of shielding. My Auralic Ares Mini came with this cheap and cheerful switch mode power supply. Now this is the kind of device that you can buy off eBay or Amazon for £10. It runs 15 volts and 1 amp. Now switch mode power supplies have a couple of advantages. They are very efficient. Inside they've got transistors that switch on and off very quickly. That's where the switch mode name comes from and that's where the efficiency comes from. Because they're very efficient, they don't need large transformers and they don't need devices inside to dissipate the heat associated with running large transformers. Heat sinks, if you like. Heat sinks and transformers are amongst the most expensive devices inside a power supply. So they're efficient, they're cheap. The downside is that that switching of transistors occurs at very high frequencies, way above the 20 kilohertz in the audio spectrum. And that high frequency noise has to be filtered out. 
in these cheap power supplies that filtering is extremely poor so all that work and trouble that Auralic went to in terms of preserving the integrity of the signal inside the uh, component the shielding they did to reduce RF and EMI noise water is poured on it to some extent by feeding a power supply that generates a whole load of noise in the first place so let's look into the ribs of how a power supply switch mode power supply works in a bit more detail the first block on the left that's an input rectifier its job is to convert the AC main signal coming in into a DC signal that's what rectification means the unregulated DC voltage coming out of that is then sent to a large filter capacitor the second block is an inverter or chopper that converts the DC signal back into AC but now at a much higher frequency many tens or even a hundred kilohertz it usually uses a MOSFET transistor and they are used because of their high current handling capabilities the third block is a transformer its job is to isolate the input from the output it also steps down the voltage so you may have 110 or 230 volts coming in off your supply and in the case of my Auralic Aries Mini it may only require an output of 15 volts the fourth block is an output rectifier it converts the high frequency AC back to DC it's the DC that you require to run electronic circuits uh, the rectified DC output is then smoothed using a bunch of inductors and capacitors and you can control the output voltage by varying the on off time ratio and that's what's called pulse width modulation cheap switch mode power supplies are notorious for not only having very poor filtration but for also having poor voltage regulation that means that the output voltage is not that stable now not only are they polluting the component that you're connecting them to the likelihood is they're going to be plugged into a strip or a wall socket where you've got other hi-fi components nearby and they're going to pollute those as well it is possible to produce a low noise well filtered well regulated switch mode power supply something like this i-fi i-power I've used this for a number of years with my Auralic Aries Mini it has a 15 volt output but there's other variants that are available with 5 volts I use one of those to power up the Mojo the Cord Mojo DAC that I have you can get them with 9 volts and 12 volts as well marketed as an audiophile grade switch mode power supply the iFi iPower retails for £49 now it features active noise cancellation technology that's the same kind of technology that you get in noise cancelling headphones and it's effectively where the input signal is monitored in this case the noise coming in and the reverse phase or the opposite signal is fed through to it effectively cancelling it out according to iFi this iFi iPower is over a thousand times quieter than your typical switch mode power supply the kind that you get free with my Auralic Aries Mini for example job done well that's at least what I thought until David Brook the proprietor of MCRU that's a dealership here in the UK contacted me a few months ago and sent me this this is a linear power supply that retails for 235 pounds now MCRU have teamed up with Long Dog Audio Long Dog have basically a track record for producing power supplies and power amplifiers and he just basically sent me this and said Taron have a look see what you think put it in your system he wasn't even expecting me to do a review necessarily I felt compelled to do this video primarily after having this in my system for the last two three months so let's look at a little bit more detail of how this linear power supply works now if you take a look at this block diagram of this linear power supply the first thing you'll see on the left is a transformer its job is to step down the voltage from whatever the mains voltage is to what you require to run your circuit um, then you've got a rectifier that's similar to the switch mode power supply it converts the AC to DC then you've got a filter 
that comprises an output capacitor that smooths off any ripples in that voltage and it has feedback resistors that are there to control the output voltage. And the final thing you have is a regulator and that ensures that you do get a stable output voltage. Now the advantages of a linear power supply over a good switch mode power supply is that they're relatively simple. There's no high frequency switching and as a result you don't need to have a whole load of filtration to get rid of that high frequency noise. The downside is they're not so efficient. You do need large transformers and those large transformers are going to generate an amount of heat and you're going to have to get rid of that somehow either through a fan or more likely through heat sinks. Heat sinks, large transformers are expensive. So if you look at this MCRU power supply, it's a little bit different. It has two boxes and that's because it has two regulators rather than one regulator. The first regulator is in the main box close to the main supply and its job is to isolate the mess that comes from your household power lines providing a relatively low noise DC supply to the second regulator. That's in its separate box and its job is to handle the changing demands of the load that's provided by your component that you've connected it to. It's removed from the main box because by removing it you isolate it from the mains noise and interference producing a cleaner output. It incorporates a low resistance high current MOSFET transistor and low impedance capacitors and they act as a local energy store. The result is a rock steady output voltage that's got ample current reserves. It's able to cope with the changing load coming from your device. So let's discuss the sound quality of these three power supplies and the impact they had in my system. Let's start with the standard uh, switch mode power supply that Aurelic provided me uh, first. Well, the reality is a few years ago, I would have accepted that standard power supply um, and not been any of the wiser and accepted that was the level of performance that that component was capable of providing. When I switched it some time ago to the iFi power supply, I noticed a definite improvement and it was an improvement across the board in pretty much all areas. So the things that you would probably look out for in your system if you switch the power supply and your system was kind of resolving enough to show up the differences is that the sound stage gets a little wider, the imaging becomes a little bit more precise, the bass gets a little tighter, a little cleaner and it's similar with the top end. There's a little bit more refinement and extension at the top. It's not so gritty and grainy in the mid range and the separation between instruments gets better. That's what I noticed when I switched from the standard to the iFi. I thought my job was done. I thought I've got a low noise power supply. What's the point in getting anything more? What's the point in spending more money? Well, the reality is what a more expensive power supply was sent to me. And after listening to that, the, again, the improvements from the iFi moving to the MCRU power supply were equally noticeable. All of that there was that I mentioned about the iFi was there. But again, um, you had even wider sound stage, better dynamics. The most noticeable things were that it was a much blacker background. I'll explain what that means. People talk about that, but they don't really quantify what that means. It means that the, as if the music popped out from a much kind of quieter, darker backdrop. And what that translates to is that micro dynamics and little fine details just are much more apparent. Little fine textures and little decays of instrument become much more noticeable. It was a significant improvement. In fact, it's a bigger improvement with my Aurelic Aries Mini and my Chord Mojo than when I replaced the Mojo for the Hugo. That made a difference in the quality of the sound, but the power supply feeding my Mojo made more of a difference than swapping my Mojo for the Hugo. That's how noticeable the improvement was. Now guys and gals out there, here's the rub. As much as I like these 
power supplies from iFi and MCRU really like them, I can't give them a formal recommendation or classification. And this is the reason why. When I test the component, I test it with a minimum of three other components. So, for example, the Bukart speakers that I tested, I tested with three different amplifiers. Same with the IOTA amplifiers, tested it with three different speakers. The reality is that I only have one streamer here. It's my Aurelic Aries Mini, and I've only tested these power supplies with one component. I know how they performed with that component. I can't say for definite how they will perform with yours. I suspect that they will perform similarly, but I can't say for sure. And that's the reason why I can't give it a formal classification. I still felt though it was important to share my experiences with what happened uh, with these power supplies with you. So this is my advice. If you have amplifiers and speakers that are around the five, 600 pound mark, and you're using a DAC or a streamer that uses one of these cheap switch mode power supplies for 49 pounds, I would suggest you go and order yourself the iFi iPower, try it in your system, see what difference it makes. If you don't like it, return it within the kind of return period. If you've got amplifiers and speakers in excess of a thousand pounds, and similarly you're using a cheap and cheerful uh, power supply, I would suggest perhaps taking a look at the MCRU supply, uh, linear power supply that retails for 235 pounds. I know it's a significant chunk of money, but it does, at least from my experience, make a significant difference in performance. So that's where I kind of landed with them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that like button, please share it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. But for today, for now, a British audio file, signing off.